back in for our second week of training videos here. I am excited about four or five plays here we're going to look at, but where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, hey, how about a kick play? You know I love these kick plays. 22 guys spread out across the field. We're going to officiate everything with five officials, but before we do, let's talk about one thing. Flipping through the Reading Study Guide for NFHS foot football officials. You know how much I love that book as well. And let's talk about the status of a kick. And before we watch this play, it's pretty important that we understand that. Now, a kick remains a kick. And you know I talk about the, the flipping on the switch when the kick ends that changes the rules. Now we just go to a running play, but the rules are really crazy when the ball is status as a kick. Now, three things will change the status of a kick, and that is possession being gained, regained, or the ball becoming dead by rule. Let's go through these points one at a time. What exactly do they mean? What do we mean when we say the status of a kick ends when possession is gained? That means the kicking team kicks the ball, the ball becomes loose, it's not any player's possession. When the receiving team gains possession of the ball, the status of the ball is no longer a kick. But what exactly is possession? Does a mere touching of the ball create possession? No. Possession of the ball occurs when the receiving team grasps and controls the ball in the field of play. So what do we mean by this, the term when possession is regained? Now the kicking team has possession of the ball and they kick it, the ball becomes loose and if they recover the ball then they have regained possession of the ball and the kick rules end. We saw an example of that in last week's training video where the kicking team regained possession of the ball just beyond the neutral zone and how it was very very important to understand exactly where the neutral zone was and how that changes the status of the ball because if the kicking team regains possession of the ball in or behind the neutral zone they can run if they make the line to gain and they get a first down in a new series. But if they gain possession of the ball beyond the neutral zone, then the, the ball becomes dead by rule and it belongs to the receiving team at the spot it is recovered by the, re the kicking team or any previous spot of first touching, whichever is more advantageous for the receiving team. Now the third thing is the ball becomes dead by rule. When does the ball become dead by rule? When it touches anywhere out of bounds or it touches someone who is out of bounds or the ball breaks the plane of the goal line and the status of the ball is still a kick. And if we had known that before this play, oh, things would have turned out much different. Let's take a look at it. Pretty simple two-step kick and the ball is away. And let's stop it right there. I want to point out the position of the back judge. You start out pretty good position, but as this ball gets by the receiver, you are too late to turn and run and you're trying to backpedal. Hey, you're not that quick anymore. You're going to have to get your head on a swivel and get around and run because you've got to officiate the goal line. This player does, this uh, defensive player or the receiving team player does actually touch the ball, but we know from our previous discussion that does not change the status of the kick. And the ball be go goes into the end zone. Now, as soon as it breaks the plane of the goal line, this ball is dead by rule. Um, we miss that point here and end up with a kicking team in possession of the ball in their opponent's end zone, and we incorrectly rule this as a touchdown but it is not. Now the same status of a kick is true whether it's a scrimmage kick and what is a scrimmage kick? That is a kick that is preceded by a snap from the line of scrimmage or a free kick. What exactly is a free kick? That is the kick that starts the, the starts the game or starts the second half and also occurs after a safety is awarded. So a free kick does not involve a snap a scrimmage kick does. Pretty simple way of remembering those two things. Very, very important, but the status of the ball remains the same no matter how the kick starts, either a scrimmage or a free kick. It does not end until uh, the ball possession is gained, regained, or the ball becomes dead by rule in this play. Uh, possession is not gained or regained. The ball crosses the goal line and becomes dead by rule. Understanding the kicking team rules being really good at them, digging into that Reading Study Guide, really important. And when you have these situations that involve kick status or the goal line, you're going to be able to properly officiate these types of plays. Very important. Scrimmage kick, free kick plays involving the goal line. And I'm going to steal a phrase from one of my mentors, Walt Coleman, who helps us with these videos. Uh, and he said, this is one of those plays that if it happens in Nashville, you hope that you have a game in Cersei because you don't want to be in this game. Uh, tough play here. We go from uh, line of scrimmage, just a little inside handoff, and obviously you can tell from the reaction the ball has come out and is on the ground. And look at the officials crashing in on the play, and I want to stop it right here. And I want to point out the referee here. 
Um, and the line judge and the umpire both right in the middle of all of this action. and Or is it action? The players have all stopped. Oh, look at this player right here, too. He's already pulled his helmet off. And every player on the field, all 22 players, have stopped playing football. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what you know or don't know. At this point, blow a whistle. This play is over. No matter what else happens or what else you think happened, if you crash in on this play, all 22 players stop, you're going to have to figure out what happened during a dead ball interval. What you can't do, and the play runs out here at 46 seconds, and let me go to this. I've got this uh, the version here. I can snap it in. I add it right here. So now we see the play rolls on. This is a Facebook. Uh, look at all the ads down here. We're making money, right? Um, this is a Facebook streaming video, and you can see that uh, the ball gets batted around here, and then we end up with this uh, offensive player running in and into the end zone and what everyone all 22 21 other players and well 22 this guy knows he didn't score a touchdown and all the fans know and the announcers know but we award a touchdown i wish i could say anything to make us feel better about uh, how we handled this play but there's nothing i can say we missed an opportunity and somebody on this crew has got to step up and we got to huddle up after this kid runs into the end zone and somebody's got to step up and say, wait a minute, we're not doing this. And I don't want to pick on these guys because we've all had these plays where we don't really know what on earth happened, but we know this can't happen. And we've got to have enough officiating instincts, enough football savvy to know that we can't let this happen. This is not a touchdown. Although we rule it a touchdown, this ball is clearly dead by rule. Uh, for another reason, I think we end up with a player on the ground with possession of the ball. I think it's the defense. And I don't know from this video that anyone could have ever said anything if we just killed the clock and gave the ball to the defense. I don't know if we could definitively say anything if we just killed the ball and went to second down. I think if you do either one of those things, we can defend whatever you did by saying the video is inconclusive. What we can't say is we properly officiated this call, this play. We cannot say that. The video is clear. This play was improperly officiated. One of the things I always say to my crew Right before we go out on the field, and uh, depending on what crew you're working with, sometimes the referee says, okay, what do you got before we go out? One of the things I like to say is make them big, which you've heard me say here a number of times. Another thing I, want, I like to say is be big on the field when your teammate is small. What do I mean by that? Step up and help your teammate, your fellow official, when you know he's in trouble. Back judge, you're clearly away from this, this play. Uh, line judge on opposite side of the field you don't crash in as hard I think you've got a very good chance to step up on this play referee you could step up umpire you could step up I don't know what happened but somebody was down on the ground with this ball we could easily defend that so be big when someone else is small and you never know who it's going to be but there's always about eh, eight ten plays in a game where you're either going to drive your crew up because of what you do or don't do or you're going to drive your crew down for what you do or don't do. So remember that saying, be big when other officials are small. Let's move along now. Play number three we're gonna look at involves forward backward pass. And uh, the thing I wanna talk about before we look at this play is when in doubt. When in doubt if a forward pass is forward or backward and it's on the ground, when in doubt it's an incomplete pass. So we look at this play here. We've got uh, two receivers on the line judge side of the field. Single receiver on the head linesman side goes in motion, and the quarterback slings this out real quick, and we it ends up on the ground. The receiver bobbles it a couple of times, and we, it ends up on the ground. We rule this. Line judge comes in here, incomplete pass. Now let's back it up and look at it in slow motion, and actually do a freeze frame here. And you see the quarterback looks like he's releasing this ball at about the 18-yard line. Draw a little line in there for you. And then we run forward here, and we see this is the first place that the receiver touches the ball. And this may be the 18-and-a-half, 18-three-quarter. I had a conversation with Coach Simpson at Cersei today, and I said, I think that was straight down the line. Coach Simpson was... 100% sure that it was backwards. And I think if we look at it like this, and I know he has, he's looked at this play a million times, we got a potential scoop and score here. Uh, if we look at it in slow motion, we get the protractor out, we stop, we freeze frame, we look at touches, and uh, yeah, I think we could say this is probably a backward pass. But there's two things that I want you to take away from looking at this play. 
First of all, we don't have the advantage of freeze frame and slow motion and rewind and a protractor in the field. We're going to have to look at this play in real time. Now, this is not an excuse to not know or to guess or to take the play off or make take push an easy button. You know, the expectation is that you're in proper position. You rule on forward and backward passes. But if it comes straight down the line, hits the ground, we want it to be incomplete. If we if it's slightly forward, obviously it's incomplete. If it's back, clearly backwards, when we want to rule this as a fumble. If it, a loose ball. If it is if there's any doubt in your mind if you don't know, you react, you wait to react, you don't know, you don't get any help. You do exactly what this line judge did, and that is you wipe this out as an incomplete pass. We don't want to give away a free touchdown. We don't want to give away an easy turnover. We want to be 150% sure that this play is backwards before we rule on this as a loose ball and give, it, give the ball to the defense. Now, here's something else I want you to take away from this. Offside officials, referee, headlinesman in this play. If you get a look at this play, if the situation opens up to you, and when this quarterback slings a ball out this, you need to take a you need to take a sneak peek. Now the headlinesman's got this block right here, which uh, you know tied in there. These these players are engaged, so I understand if he does not have a reaction. But this is this is initially his key that that goes in motion, and so I would suspect that he would know that he was out there. You might get a look at this if you're a hundred and fifty percent sure that this ball is thrown backwards. Referee, this goes for you, too. 150% sure this play is backward. Line judge got two guys over here he's trying to cover. Then what I would like for you to do is to extend your arm out with your fists closed toward the backfield of the offense to signal this is a backward pass. You don't have to be in a hurry to do it, but if you're 150% sure it's backwards, throw that signal that signal up to show that it's a backwards pass. Line judge, if you are not 150% sure it's forward, there's any doubt in your mind, take a sneak peek at the headlinesman and the referee. If you get nothing like you do in this play, no one has ruled on this pass. It's all yours. Own it. And do what you did right here. This is correctly officiated by the line judge on a play in slow motion, instant replay, and with our protractor we may see as slightly backwards, but in real time, we're unsure. And we rule this an incomplete pass. This play is properly officiated by this crew. It's something the coaches have got to understand. We've got to be 150% sure that a ball is loose and backwards pass. When in doubt, wipe it out. Incomplete. Good job. All right, play number four, and let's take a look at this play. And you guessed it, or did you? Look at the down and distance here. Fourth down, and uh, we are in a scrimmage kick formation. What is a scrimmage kick formation? Well, that's in rule two. Uh, scrimmage kick formation, a player in position to receive the backward pass seven or more yards behind. That also gives a deep snapper protection. And uh, look at this play. Is he going to kick it? No, he's not. Here he goes, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling down the sideline. And a big, big play. But we do throw a flag here for an illegal block in the back. And what do we think about that? Let's wind it back, take another look, and let's talk again about players in chase mode. We've talked about this for several years. And uh, it's a good time to review it, though. What is a player in chase mode? So if we take this player right here, draw a line through his back. Look at this red line right here. Now, think about this as a clock. So he's looking toward the sideline would be one. His back would be six. And uh, this left side, we're going to call it nine, and we'll call the right side three. So you see how we've got a clock here? So players that are chase in chase mode are coming from behind the three or behind the nine position, and they are chasing their opponent. They then initiate contact with their opponent from the back, and that is a foul for an illegal block in the back. It is an absolute requirement that uh, to block a player in the back, you've got to come from chase mode. If you don't come in chase mode, but you come from the side or come from the front, and there's contact any place other than the back, we do not want a block in the back called. That is not that does not meet the requirement. So let's look at this play again here, and I run it and stop it right here, and look at this offensive player right here. Is he coming from chase mode? Let me back it up a little bit more. Is he chasing this player? No, you're exactly right. He's not. He's head up. They're running side by side. There's contact. Look at this initial contact. And we freeze frame this. It's so much easier. 
if we just had a freeze frame in the field, it'd make the game so much easier to officiate. But it's important to learn from these type of plays because what happens here, we get tricked. We do not see the players approaching. We do not realize this player is not in chase mode. We do not realize that the contact is from the side. We get to it late and we see this action where the player's falling from behind and, and all of the contact is behind at this point, but it's too late. What I always say is if you do not see the two steps before a block, do not try to make a ruling on an illegal block in the back. So who else would have a look at this play? I would say the umpire has a great look. If we just uh, peruse around here, let me put some numbers. One, two, three, four, five here. There's no contact the, the umpire could be looking at. The only place that you have the potential for contact is right here. So, umpire, you could have helped with this. Referee, you could have helped because you should have been working out ahead of the blocks. Am I right? Back judge, you're out of position. You're way down the field. So, we got a shot with the uh, head linesman. Or is this a line judge? I don't really know where the camera is. See the line judge? Ahead. This line of scrimmage official right here. You got the best look. You, you're the one who throws the flag. But it's obvious that you're not looking at this block ahead of the runner. And that's what you got to do. You got to discipline yourself to get your head up the field and see the potential blocks that are going to happen. You have to have a feel for where the runner is and get head up and see these blocks out ahead of the play. But understanding what chase mode means, understanding where a player's coming from, seeing the two steps before, slowing these plays down, process them, don't react, read, don't react, make them big. And you will get these plays right. This is an improperly officiated. This is an incorrect call for an illegal block in the back. That's it for this week. I've got to cut it short. I've got a defensive holding call behind the line of scrimmage on a forward pass that I really wanted to show you, but I just didn't have time this week. It's already done, so we'll lead the, uh, the training tape off next week with that. I want to remind you about uh, one thing. Nothing in this video ever meant to embarrass anybody. What I did was early in my career committed to never making the same mistake twice. These training videos are to help you learn from other people's mistakes. We also so show some things that we did well, like the forward-backward pass. So there's, it's just an opportunity to learn. That's it. Jackie McPherson, my old buddy, reminded me of something this week that we used to always say on these training tapes, and it's right out of the Reading Study Guide, and I love it. When you're through learning, you're through. So that's an important message. Thanks for everything you do. We're right in the middle of a pandemic and you're out here with these young people helping them play this game that we love, football. We learn about teamwork. We learn about determination and setting goals and driving ourselves. As young student athletes, we become better men. And you're playing a part in that, along with some great coaches and administrators that are helping to keep high school football well in Arkansas at a really, really challenging time. For the Arkansas Association of High School Officials, this is Todd Allen saying, I hope to see you on the field real soon.